Hello everybody, uh, again. So today we're going to be talking about machine learning. We'll explain what machine learning is and also we'll give some examples from real life so you'll identify with. So what is machine learning? To explain to you what machine learning is, I'm going to uh, uh, interact right now with Siri. Hello Siri. Hello. Uh, Siri, can you tell me the closest hotel to where I am? Here's what I found. Thank you. Can you give me directions to the Mangrove Hotel, please? Getting directions to Eastern Mangroves Hotel and Spa. Thank you. No sweat. Okay, so, so you saw this interaction between me and Siri. And I asked Siri a very simple question about uh, the nearest hotel, and then uh, Siri was able to understand what I am saying and then find out the hotels that are near me and then gave me the direction to the hotel that I, I, uh, I chose. Now Siri uh, actually is a machine learning application. It has capabilities to understand speech recognition, okay, because it understood what I was saying. And then it was able to go to the Google uh, Maps and, and you know, gave me, the, gave me the direction. So that's basically what machine learning, in the simplest form, the application of machine learning. In general, machine learning is uh, the science of making machines learn from previous data and behave like humans. Okay, that's the whole idea. And then they start behaving in a certain way without having to explicitly give the answer. So with machine learning, okay, we don't actually give the machine the answer. The machine actually will find the answer from previous learned data. So that uh, uh, gives the question, well, how does it learn? We have to give it data. That part is called the learning phase. So, so the machine then has to go into a stage where it's learning from the data the right answer versus the wrong answer. Uh, and then based on that then, it gets fine-tuned to what the right result is. And then all the new data that you give it, it uses that learned knowledge to give you the right answer. It doesn't give you all, you know, all the time the right answer. There's still a little bit of error here and there, but as it learns, it modifies its behavior and it gives you better and better answer. That's the idea of machine learning. There are two types of machine learning. There is supervised learning and there is unsupervised learning. So the supervised learning, uh, machine learning, is that the model is able to predict with the help of some labeled data. So we have to uh, pretty much tell it, tell it what is what in the learning phase. Okay, so for example, if we uh, if we uh, if we want the machine to uh, distinguish between uh, spoons and knives, okay? So what we do is we give it spoons and we tell it these are spoons. And we give it knives and we say these are knives, okay? In the learning phase, therefore, what we do is we tell the machine what the label data means. And then when we give it the other data, then the machine is able to distinguish between the spoons and uh, knives. There are two types of supervised learning. One is classification and the other one is regression. The classification is used whenever there is like a, a, a binary kind of uh, classification. For example, we want to know and uh, when we receive an email, receive an email, the server wants to know whether this is a spam email or not spam email. If it's a spam email, then what do we do with it? We put it in the spam folder, and then we classify or we mark that site or that user as a spam site. If it's not spam, then we say, oh, this goes to your inbox so that you can process that email. So with that, we use the classification algorithms to achieve that. The regression scheme is used whenever there's a dependent and independent variable. There's an independent variable that affects another variable. For example, uh, we want to know the temperature 
versus the humidity. Okay, whenever the temperature goes up, humidity goes, uh, goes up. So there's that dependency between the temperature and the uh, humidity. Once it learns that relationship, then of course what happens then, as I give it a new data set, then uh, it will uh, give us the right result. Now the second type of machine learning is the unsupervised learning. So unsupervised, just like the name says, that means that you don't actually tell the machine what's what's what. So for example, in the fork and, and, and knife example, we actually told the machine that this is a fork, this is a knife, but now we don't actually tell it, okay? It needs to learn that on its own by applying some uh, algorithms, and then it will determine that the knives are knives and the forks are forks by itself. And you say, how can it do that? And the, uh, the interesting thing that it can using this, uh, this technique. Uh, so we do not give it labeled data as opposed to the first method, which is the uh, supervised learning where we actually label the data. Now we don't give it labeled data. Uh, so for example, with the forks and knives, then what we would do, then we would give it the forks and the knives, but we don't tell it w what it is. And then let it try to separate the two things from each other, okay? And then through the learning phase, then we would actually uh, help the machine to separate them into the forks and to the knives, okay? And then uh, subsequently then, when you give it a fork, then it would put it with the forks. When you give it a knife, it would put it with a knife. There are two models that are used in the unsupervised learning. One is called clustering, in which we would then cluster the similar objects together. And the other one, which is the association. Something is associated with something else. With the clustering, for example, uh, let's say that it is a lot, wants to analyze its customers, okay, wants to know who uses more data than voice, okay, because they want to target their campaign so that they sell the people who use more data, they want to sell them more data packages, and the people who use more voice, then they want to uh, sell them more vo voice uh, packages. And those who use both, then they want to sell them, you know, something that is targeted, okay? So to do that, then they analyze their customers, and then they can cluster them using the clustering rule into three clusters. Those that use data, those that use uh, uh, voice, and those that use both. Then they can actually target uh, the marketing campaign and the packages to fit the need of the customer. This is a, a live application that actually the uh, telecom companies use that all over the world. The second one is the association. With the association application is the uh, what we call the uh, shopping basket analysis. Okay, for example, Carrefour and Lulu they could use this application to find out that if customer one bought, uh, let's say, uh, bread, milk, fruits, and wheat, and then customer two bought bread, milk, rice, and butter. Then we have customer three who bought bread. Can the algorithm tell me what likelihood of buying the, the second product with the bread or the third product with the bread? And believe it or not, the algorithm can tell you that. Amazon uses and Netflix also. Uh, you know, I'm very sure you watch Netflix, so you watch this movie in Notebook, okay? When you watch it, then it will suggest to you other movies, and that's using the shopping basket analysis, because those people who watched the Notebook also watched uh, the other movies, okay? So that's like, these are examples from real life that, uh, that uses the uh, unsupervised machine learning. Semantic clustering, that's something that you, you uh, all of you use uh, Google, right? When you put something search with Google, what happens? It gives you a list of the likelihood of the items that contain that, uh, that word that you are searching for, okay? That's using semantic clustering. That has a lot of application in natural language processing. We write in a certain way. When we write, let's say, knife, then we also write cut with it. There are certain uh, words and certain things that happen together. For example, if I want to look at uh, a travel with etihad, then I can cluster 
uh, these uh, the activities into uh, maybe luggage because most likely people are going to ask about luggage i can uh, cluster it with check-in check-in time and check-in rules and so on and so forth i can uh, also add let's say food you know vegetarian food or a special kind of food or whatnot uh, also maybe traveling with pets because a lot of people they travel with pets and they have some questions about uh, how to handle the pets so therefore I can cluster all these semantics around some sort of architecture to help uh, uh, our customers uh, to process things better to recap machine learning as we mentioned is the idea is to use previous data to train the machine uh, to behave like humans to make decisions so it's not specifically programmed but rather it's something that it learns and it will make prediction Sometimes these predictions are not going to be 100%, but the more it learns, the more uh, uh, accuracy it's going to get, okay? And uh, we said that there are two types, general types, the supervised learning and the unsupervised learning, and we explain both. There are other learning uh, uh, methods or uh, models that are a little bit more sophisticated. Uh, maybe we can talk about this in uh, another video. Uh, and that is reinforced learning and deep learning. So uh, with that, I uh, finish this video. I enjoyed talking to you. We'll see you next video. Thank you.